as was also pointed out, I think you must have read my notes before I sat down. <laughs> as was also pointed out, Ukraine has been an independent state. It's re-emerged, if you like, in Europe since 1991. Nearly two decades have gone by, and I think it's fair to say that many of us are somewhat confused, unhappy, disappointed, uncertain about the course of Ukrainian political life. Reflecting on these kinds of issues, what is the cause that our community should be organized around and should serve? Thinking about it, trying to come up with some ideas to share with you today, I realize that there really is no black or white answer to this question. Here, it's very clear that we as a community, whether you come from UNO or Liga, SUM or PLAST, MUNO, Ukrainian Self-Reliance League, or even from the ULFTA, AUC, whatever organization you may be from, it's clear that our community here in Canada is not them over there. There are two different places. There are Ukrainians in Canada, which is a place, and there are Ukrainians in Ukraine, which is a different place. And that, I think, is a fundamental and obvious kind of point, and yet I think we forget it very, very often. Over there, they're not us, and over here, we're not them. We haven't been them for a very long time, nor have they been us for a very long time. So when we talk about them and us, our place, Canada, their place, Ukraine, the linkage, the relationship between the two of those places, I think one of the first things we have to talk about is, what is that cause that somehow brings everyone in this room here together today? regardless of who your parents were, or when they came, or what political positions they took in the community, what church they attended or didn't attend. There are two, at least two causes here. There is first the cause of Ukraine's independence, and then there is the cause of Ukraine's freedom. Perhaps there are other causes, and I'm going to suggest to you that there are. Well, if our concern has been with Ukraine's independence, we should all go home, because it's over. There is an independent Ukraine. I sense perhaps that my colleague here doesn't particularly like what Ukraine is like today. I certainly don't. I think many of you are disappointed and confused and upset about the course it's taking. But it is clearly an independent, recognized state, a part of a number of nation states that are found on the Earth's surface. But is it a free Ukraine? And that, I think, is a key question. Is Ukraine today free? And so do we have a cause, namely the cause of Ukraine's freedom? I'll come back to that. I want to also sort of talk to you about our community here. And as I was thinking about colors, and I was thinking about black and white, and whether there's a clear-cut answer to the question of how should we be supporting Ukraine's independence, or should we be supporting Ukrainians' independence, I started to think about us here, the Ukrainian community in Canada. So let me first talk a little bit about how that community came to be. Some of you know this history, and to those like Andrew, I apologize. I'm going to be giving a kind of very summary history of this story. But I want to share with you my sort of reflections on the nature of how our community, which is around us today, came to be. And think of it in the color spectrum. The first Ukrainians who began arriving in Canada in 1891, so we'll be celebrating the 120th anniversary next year, and I'm going to return to that subject as well, were Tamnilud, by and large. They were chorny, they were dark. They were peasants, so if you like, brown, they were from that end of the color spectrum. They were unsure in some cases of who they were. They did not have a fully developed sense of their national consciousness. They had to struggle to get here struggle to survive the hardships of the pioneer experience, struggle to establish themselves, re-establish themselves in Canada. These were the famous men in sheepskin coats. Now, I don't think there is anyone in this room who was one of those men in sheepskin coats. Maybe a few of you are the descendants of some of those people. But very clearly, the 170,000 people who came to Canada from Western Ukraine predominantly <coughs> between 1891 and 1914 uh, uh, were individuals for whom the cause was largely their own cause. 
the cause of resettlement and survival in a new land which was not always welcoming. They had no sense of a cause of <laughs> Ukraine's freedom or independence up until 1914. And here in Canada, of course, we know, I think you all know now, much more than perhaps some of us knew even a few years ago, that they endured not only the hardships of resettlement and pioneering in the West, and then later work in the industrial cities of central Canada, but they also had to endure xenophobic prejudice, and particularly during the outbreak of the First World War, internment operations, disenfranchisement, the confiscation of what little wealth they had, and a whole series of other indignities that I believe <coughs> crippled, crippled our community in its earliest years. Now, all of those pioneers are now long deceased. None of them are alive anymore. Many of them escaped the community during or just after the First World War because they recognized that in Canada, in this place, identifying yourself as a Ukrainian or as a member of an ethnic minority could prove to be a rather unwise choice. Now remember, and again, we can't speak about this in any length today, but thousands of Ukrainians were interned, forced to work for the profit of their jailers, had what little wealth they had confiscated, found themselves displaced within Canada to Canadian concentration camps, lost the right to vote, some of them were deported, some of their wives and children were sent to the camps with them, and suffered all of this not because of any wrong they had done, but only because of who they were and where they had come from. Not surprisingly, and I remember as a young graduate student in the 1970s interviewing people who had been here at the time or who came here just after the First World War, many of them said, Shumumani Totrava. It's much better to take my name, Lubomir Lachuk, and become Louis Love or something, and blend into the population and become a Canadian and forget about any attachments to the overseas world because that, that cause only gets me into trouble. And people want to live normal lives. We all want normal lives. Now those pioneers are long gone. Their descendants are now in the fifth or sixth generation. Seventh generation in some cases. I can assure you that they constitute the majority of that so-called 1.2 million Ukrainian Canadians that we're always talking about. Our leaders, like my good friend Pablo Grod here, often will go to the government of Canada and say, there are 1.2 million Ukrainians that believe what I believe. And he knows that we can't find 1.2 Ukrainians sometimes <laughs> that have to stand behind us. But he tries, and of course we play that statistical game. But the reality is that most of the descendants, fifth and sixth generation of Ukrainian Canadians, have no idea, no idea whatsoever, of this kind of organization, UNO, or LIGA, or SUM, or PLOS, much less the Ukrainian Canadian Civil Liberties Association, have no sense of an organized community, may indicate on a census form that they have some Ukrainian heritage, because that's safe, it's anonymous, it gives us a little influence, but in fact is a very weak expression of ethnic identity. So as far as I'm concerned, most and again, I'm painting some broad brushes here, I know there are exceptions. But most of the pioneers, most of the descendants of those pioneers, most of the descendants of those settlers in the fifth or sixth generation barely are conscious or aware of an organized community and certainly are rarely, if ever, even in a modest way, mobilized in support of the organized community. What is their cause? They don't have one. In the interwar immigration, we had a smaller <coughs> intake of Ukrainians. These people were on a different part of the color spectrum. Instead of being not really fully conscious of who they were, some of them were what I'll call blue. They were nationalists, patriots, people who had tried to establish an independent Ukraine and failed between 1917 and 21. Others were reds who had fought against Ukraine's independence in the uh, forces of the Soviet Union. Some were, of course, still unsure of who they were, so we had a very mixed immigration in the interwar period of about 70,000 people. 